Hello, folks. Welcome to today's episode of Machine and Clicker Combat Game Cards. Today, I will do the translation and tell you some stories and background information of the Armed Fighting Suit Mark II. When the previous model Mark I was equipped, there was a lot of disagreement among mercenaries about the classification and tactical use of this armor suit, because it was a new weapon that was rushed into the battle. Soldiers needed to explore the battlefield and learn from experience to make the better use of the suit. Aside from tactical and weapon classification issues, armor's color scheme is a constant headache for mercenaries. The color scheme of earlier model was easy to distinguish between the friend and foe on the battlefield, but the color was too conspicuous and resulted in a high damage rate. Therefore, considering that most of the campaigns at that time took place on the grasslands, the mercenary arm factory temporarily designated MAA grade as the universal color scheme for Mark II armor suit. But as the battle line stretched and the area of operation expanded, the soldiers on the front line painted their armor suit with various camouflage colors. So the arms factory also sent specialists to the front line to study the survivability of armor suit with different camouflage on the battlefield. On the left is an armor suit from Boomerang, Ninth Panzer Company, who fought in Operation Super Hammer in September 2885. The basic color is dark yellow, with a graffiti of liquid bottles and pipes. The chest, back, and left arm have tactical accessories. For recording battlefield events and audio recordings. In the middle is the commander of Six Ten Company, who was deployed during the second half of Operation Super Hammer in October two thousand eight hundred eighty-five. The armor suit was put into desert combat, so the suit was painted in the same brown base with Barnier Brown dot camouflage. The top half of the helmet shield has a baking blue finish to cope with the harsh desert sun. And its reflections. The suit's communication equipment has also been enhanced to help teammates who get lost in the desert to communicate over long distances. On the right is Commander Gordon Hillwood of Six Squadron, Fourteenth Panzer Company. He was put into combat in September two thousand eight hundred eighty-five. The original armor fighting suit was scrapped after Military Factory developed a new generation of armed fighting suit, the Super Armed Fighting Suit. That's what they called it, also known as SAFS. But the commander, accustomed to the fighting with AFS, refused to change his Mark II armor suit to SAFS. So his suit is an uncoated one that was overproduced at the end of the war. In the picture. We can see that the commander has replaced the shielding at various joints and painted three Q marks on the back. And here there will be nine different color scheme variants that were seen in the battlefield. The one on the left is a commanding armor suit of First Squadron Six Chariot Wind, active during the later half of Operation Super Hammer in October 2885. This squadron is an armed vehicle unit, and the Mo Mobile AFS was set up as the squadron's command. In this picture, we can see this armor suit has undergone extensive modification in terms of communication equipment compared to the standard issue. And the one on the right is the armor suit of Major Steve Leahy, commander of 30th Squadron, Second Arm Chaser Company. So after training, the squadron was engaged in Operation Super Hammer immediately. Interestingly, the armor suit bears a plaque commemorating the 25th anniversary of the opening of Hard Rock Cafe, a civilian bar on the mercenaries' southern front. Picture three shows the armor suit of Sergeant Don Alez, First Squad, Tenth Squadron, Third Panzer Hunter Company. In the Cieso battle in the rainforest, it was difficult for troops to communicate with each other due to the signal interference. However, Alice proposed to use the talking drum, an African instrument, to transmit signals, and Dance won the battle. However, because of the special nature of this instrument, this tactic was limited to African mercenaries. It is documented that in the second operation, the Third Squadron, which had imitated this tactic, was completely wiped out by the enemy. 
The surgeon's catchphrase "God is black" is written on the chest. The star and the moon on the left back is a sign suggesting the completion of training in space warfare. Now comes to number four, an armor suit of Lieutenant Ronnie Vincent. 10th Sniper Squadron, 1st Panzer Hunter Company. This squadron was specially recruited for excellence in shooting. As a result, 12 out of 36 of the first recruits in the squadron were gangsters. This is a rare result that embarrassed the military. But the results of this squadron were outstanding, and the loss of personnel was near zero. It is worth mentioning that the squadron's nickname is 38 Special or Adult Shooting Unit. Here I need to explain that 38 in Japanese refers to flirty woman. Number 5. This picture shows the armor suit of Commander Mark Barr from 111 Squadron, 2nd Arm Chaser Company. So before the war, as a bank clerk, Mark colluded with a female major in the accounting department to embezzle the army's food distribution expenses. It later became known as the Sausage Affair, and Mark was detained as its mastermind. Rumor says that the Major was a retired old lady. Mark must have sacrificed a lot to steal that money. <laughs> Number 6 is the armor suit of Captain Nung Vin Trao, commander of the 2nd Squadron, Nice Panzer Hunter Company, a captain with a reputation as an expert in guerrilla warfare. He was promoted to commander of the squadron during the war because he was eager to develop new tactics for the armor suits. The captain then proposed a variety of uses for the suits, the most famous of which was, surprisingly, the use of the suit as an anti armor trap. Number 7 is a funny one. This is an armor suit of the first squadron from the Boomerang, Nice Panzer Chaser Company. The stripes were drawn for the Operation Super Hammer, but such color schemes were not widely used in mercenary troops, therefore, resulting in the loss of three armor suits due to friendly fire. Number 8. This is a reserve armor suit from 14th Panzer Chaser Company. Originally a small unit, it was promoted to a battle company after being expanded with new SAFS. A Mark II suit with this color scheme is very rare and is generally assigned to company members who are still in reserve service. The last one here shows another reserve armed suit from the 4th Squadron 14th Panzer Hunter Company. The suit was also the last batch produced at the end of the war after AFS took a back seat. The suit was well preserved in the squadron as a rear guard unit, and suits with this color scheme was later collected by the logistics unit and displayed in the Museum of War History. This will be the end of today's episode, and I do hope the content I provide today is helpful for you. If you like the content, please give a thumb up or subscribe, and also feel free to comment in the comment section. Tell me what you would like to see next, okay? Thanks folks.